Hey everybody, I'm Steve Rosenbaum here with my partner in crime, Erica Matsumoto, and we are at 370 J Street. Well, we're not at 370 J Street, but we're virtually at 370 J Street for the second in our four part series of the NYC Media Lab open house. I have to tell you, Erica, just looking at those images, walking down the hall, first of all, it brings back great memories. And secondly, I get a little antsy, like, can we get back there like soon? Much as I love this, you know, digital thing, being back in the building would be nice. Um, One day soon enough. So today we're going to talk about the uh, Verizon 5G retail challenge, and we're going to introduce you to three amazing companies. You're going to get to see their work, and we're going to meet our friends from Verizon. We're going to talk about kind of the idea behind the program. But but to begin with, I just wanted to remind people of the strength of the NYC Media Lab in terms of our university and corporate members. And, maybe share a little bit about that. Yeah, so at our core, NYC Media Lab is a university consortium. So even though we're housed within NYU's engineering school, we work closely with faculty and researchers and graduate students across not only NYU, but Columbia, the New School, Pratt, CUNY, School of Visual Arts, and Manhattan College. We are supported by a roster of excellent corporate members that includes companies like Verizon, um, as well as Viacom, The New York Times, AMC Networks, Estee Lauder, amongst others. By the way, just not to go backwards, but, but the New York Times presentation last week, if you haven't watched that program, you should jump back into your either Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are, and take a look because it's mind blowing. It was really amazing. Um, so the thing about the Media Lab is, we focus on core technologies like data science, spatial computing, future interfaces, and creative technology, which includes synthetic media, digital storytelling, creative coding, UI, and UX. I mean, we really are really at the forefront of all of these smart people. And, and you know, last but not least, three basic areas where our programs take place. Corporate innovation, which is prototyping projects like the one you're about to see. Um, venture platform, which is our startups and accelerators. Um, which is, you know, at the combine, and then last but not least, executive education. So today, we're going to take a look at the Verizon 5G retail challenge. Erica, maybe just like a sentence or two about what the challenge entails. Yeah, um, our challenge this year with the Verizon 5G Labs team aimed to bring in startups and university fellows to work together to identify really interesting use cases of 5G as it pertains to the future of retail. So how can 5G and edge computing unlock new ways for customers to experience um, commerce and retail? How can we bridge the gap between digital and brick and mortar and find new ways to build in analytics? Next, I want to bring in Christian Grinalda, who is the director of the Verizon 5G Labs to talk about the program. Mm -hmm. so, so start with just an easy question, but just so that we understand and our viewers and listeners understand. What is the 5G Lab? Where, where does it sit in the organization and kind of where did it come from? Sure. So, so the 5G Lab is, uh, it's not, you know, when you picture what a lab is in your, in your mind right now, it's not, um, you know, soldering irons and, and, uh, and a bunch of technical stuff going on. It's, it's really about the ecosystem around uh, 5G. And you know, back in 2017, even before we launched it uh, in market, we, we said, okay, 4G changed the world right you've got apps on your phone and your device um that you don't you know you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do what you do today if you didn't have them. and so that that happened on top of the 4g network but the 5g network is exponentially more powerful and so we wanted folks outside the company um to work with us to come out uh with well what's the next big thing right and if you had the chance to go and and build an Uber or build a, uh, a you know unicorn startup um, before the App Store opened, you probably you probably take a swing in it. And so that's what we're trying to go and do through the 5G Labs, and and they're across the country and across the the globe now. And um, and what we do there is we we host events and meetups and hackathons to educate folks about what uh, what 5G actually is. That it's a supercomputer in your pocket. That it's the changing of how you build applications and hardware. And, uh, and we start with that and then we say, what would you use it for? Because startups like the ones that we've worked with together at the Media Lab are the ones that are um, obsessed about solving those problems for their customers. And so by giving them access to those test beds, to things like edge computing, 
um, to engineers that uh, that help them along the way, we can we can build the realm of the possible and actually show that it's possible. Um, so we can drive you know a better outcome for our customers and society to um, uh, faster. All right, awesome. So shifting a little bit towards the program partnership that we did with your team this year, um, you know, our challenge explored applications of 5G in retail and we brought in five startups as well as university fellows to build on the 5G network and identify um, really interesting use cases. Um, what are you seeing in the market today given the given the challenges in the retail sector, um, what are some compelling sort of ideas or sort of solutions that you're seeing that you're really excited about? Totally, um, and looking back at the program, you know, we, it, it was super timely, right? And, and a lot of the, the ideas uh, that you'll hear about today from some of the participants are, are relevant now even more than ever. And, uh, and as a company, Verizon's done a whole heck of a lot to change the way that we engage with our customers. You know, it starts with the sort of safety of, uh, of our, our teams, our employees, and, and the folks that we interact with. Um, but we're shifting the way that we do business, and we're doing that super rapidly. And, and we're doing that in a sort of innovative way. Uh, I'll give you an example. Now, if, uh, if you know, our, our, our folks in the field can use an app um, to video chat with the customer when they're on site, and they can do that in real time. Um, we found really interesting ways to, to uh, digitize the store experience and make sure that social distancing and, and self-checkout and self-service um, you know, self tools are all, all um, being utilized and scaled, right? The, the workforce is all working from home for the most part uh, for folks that don't have mission critical um, you know, roles to play within the company. So that it's, it's um, innovation through, through necessity, right? And, and when we start to put um, constraints on the way that we need to go and do business, well, there's, there's really great things that come out of it. So we're seeing all, all those types of innovation come out um, just from, from our teams. And, uh, and we've even done an employee-wide challenge. Um, so, you know, 150 plus thousand employees um, who are living and, and working in uh, this environment, coming up with ideas for us to, uh, to solve, you know, how we do business today, come up with ideas for our customers uh, for the future and, and hopefully create good opportunity to, to have society be stronger than ever when we come out the tail end of this thing. So I got to ask this question. I mean, you're not a little company. You've got tons of smart people. You've got PhDs. You've got lots of brilliant people. What makes Verizon say we want to do an open challenge and bring in these feisty startups? Like what, <laughs> where does that come from? Yeah. Well, there's some fight and feisty, right? People, uh, they're, like I said, they're, they're obsessed about solving these problems. And, and you, you, you hear this story um, behind the founders and, and what got them to the idea that they've, uh, they've built, you know, they, they have a perspective uh, that I could never have. Right. Um, and so when we look at some of these areas and, and sure we, we do these in areas that are relevant to Verizon. So, you know, they're not things completely out of left field, but we need to make sure that we we're not subscribing to the uh, not invented here philosophy. And, uh, and I think when you, when you sort of operate within those walled gardens, then you're, you're missing out on ideas. And those ideas can come from anywhere, right? They can come from, you know, the student who's, who's got a residency or an internship, um, the, the five person startup that just identified a problem um, that they can uniquely solve in a novel way. Um, we, we also really think about, you know, how, how these new toolkits um, can get put into these, these uh, innovators' hands. And, you know, we want to make sure it's not just the, the big companies that can take advantage of 5G. We want to make sure everybody gets access to, uh, to, to the development tools, the, the edge computing, um, because we think, you know, the next wave of innovation is going to be the next wave of startups. So we want to do right by the ecosystem today and, and make sure they get access just like, you know, um, big partners do as well. So in terms of um, where, you know, the 5G Labs team is today, given our current public health uh, crisis and our global pandemic, like what's next for you and the team? How are you going to sort of adapt to um, our current crisis um, yeah. and plan for the year ahead? Yeah, I, you know, 
Look, it's it's uh, it's eye opening, and and I think when you think about the the team, we're all, we're all you know we're all remote now. Um, everybody brings a different perspective, right? Um, we've got folks that have families, we've got folks that don't, we've got uh, you know folks that that have to to consider um, you know friends and loved ones. Um, you know, I'm I'm at home now with uh, with two little ones, and you know my wife's working at the hospital still, so. You know, we've got to all figure out ways to, to push through. And, and what I've seen is people are, people are super resilient. And I think, um, I, I feel like the, the connection that we're making with folks through things like this, where we're, we're talking and, and, you know, I've got a, a creaky fan and I've got a five-year-old running um, to bang down the door here in a second. Um, and his, his two-year-old sister, um, you know, banging him down every couple of minutes. <laughs> that the people, um, even though we're apart, we're a little bit closer because we're, we're right now we're in each other's homes. And, uh, and I think that there's a certain level of empathy there, a certain level of, um, you know, making connections. And I think the team is doing a heck of a job, um, adapting to it. And, and for us, you know, it's, I can't, I can't put a, a, a 5g phone in, in everybody's hands to, to have them experience what it's like to, to use some of these new, um, tools and experiences. So we're, we're trying to adapt pretty quickly. What's, um, you know, one of the things we're doing is an event series. So in the next, you know, couple of days, if you go to verizon5glabs.com, we've got virtual events, um, lots of them, some of them in, in um, you know, VR with partners, and we're figuring out what are these new ways to, uh, to create community and engage people and, and educate them. Um, we're thinking about, well, how can I take an entire physical 5G lab and put it into a virtual environment so we can all join there together. Um, and we're doing that for, you know, uh, a customer and we'll do it for the, the startup and we'll bring, uh, we'll bring some students there so they can go and see, you know, a dinosaur in a museum that they can't get to today. Right. And, and yeah. those are the types of things that the companies that are, uh, are, are joining today um, are, are solving for, right. Echo AR is trying to figure out how I can bring the dinosaur to your house, you know, yeah, that's really cool. I actually saw that um, there's like a VR filmmaking event I think you guys have coming up. Mm -hmm. which is really cool, really interesting about like filmmaking using VR. Yeah. And, and look, these are these are super relevant um, themes, right? If if we can't, um, if we can't get to uh, a theatrical experience, what do you do at home to make it more interactive? If mm -hmm. um, you know, if we, we, we did one uh, uh, event last week with um, uh, a hospital in Boston and the American Heart Association talking about the future of telehealth and, you know, how do I stay connected to doctors and, and loved ones and, and folks like that. We're, we're taking the, um, the, the telepresence robots that roam around the 5G labs and we've given them to hospitals and, and nursing homes so that you know, the patients who might not be able to see their loved ones if they're in isolation or, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can't get out, can, can find new ways to, to stay connected. So, you know, we're, we're trying to do, um, we're trying to do the, the best we can. I think, you know, even the, uh, the challenge for employees, we're making donations um, based off of the, the winning submissions. So like, we're, we're trying to make, um, make Verizon um, do right by society and, and help our customers and, and engage our employees and still work with the ecosystem, um, because when we get out of this thing, it's it'll be the you know we talk about the new new normal. Well, in that new world, five G and, and Verizon will be there to make sure that that connection's there, um, and then for us to collectively come up with, hey, what does a retail store of the future experience look like? What does it mean when I go into um, uh, a grocery store? What does a mall look like? It has that e-commerce and digital um, experience start to blend. And, and where do these new 5G and edge computing toolkits really come into play? Christian, thank you awesome. so much. We're gonna look at three companies now. And right. uh, really appreciate working with you and look forward to doing more. Likewise, thanks guys. So I, I gotta tell you, what I love about, about Christian is he's a technologist, he's a Verizon person, but he's just clearly passionate about innovation. And it's really, it's really fun to talk to him and the companies we're gonna see coming up are clearly, you know, the the effort of him breathing life into this program. I really appreciate that about him. Agreed. Yeah, he's been a great partner and a supporter to the NYC Media Lab, and his team at the 5G Labs is also an ex, has been an excellent program partner as well. 
All right, so we're, we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with company number one. We have three companies today, and number one is going to be Rilla Voice. Now, you know, this is a company that is doing something that I think you've probably never heard of. They're using audio to find out insights. And so with that, I wanna introduce Sebastian Jimenez, who's going to tell us about Rilla Voice. Sebastian, take it away. Um, so I'm Sebastian. I am the founder of Rilla Voice. And I want you to take a step back to like maybe a couple months ago and think of the last time you went shopping. You probably spoke to someone like this. Let's call him Charles. Charles asked you what you needed. You said you were looking for the new Superfly 1000 sneakers, but Charles said they didn't have any. So you thanked him and you left. Now, in that very short but very typical conversation, Charles found out very important pieces of information about you. He found out who you were, why you were in the store in the first place, what specific product you were looking for, and how was your experience. Now, brands like McDonald's, Sephora, Starbucks, they're spending tens of billions of dollars every year on social media analytics, online surveys, and even call center analytics, all to try to understand their customers better. But 90% of the interactions their customers have with their brands don't happen online. They happen offline, face-to-face, -face, in their stores, with people like Charles. And Charles is having hundreds of these conversations every day, thousands every week, where he's getting to understand their customers much better. And it's not only Charles. It's the grocery store clerk who helps you find the toilet paper. It's the fast food worker who takes your complaint at the counter. It's the thousands of nurses helping patients across the country during this pandemic. It's the tens of millions of field employees who are having billions upon billions of face-to-face -face conversations with customers every single month. That's data that's comparable to the amount of Google searches. But right now, none of it is being captured. But what if there was a way that businesses could actually hear what Charles is hearing, that they could understand their customers the way he does? That's why we built Rilla. We are building voice recognition AI to capture insights from all the face-to-face -face conversations happening in offline commerce. Here's how it works. Step one, employees talk with customers, just like they normally do. No training required. Step two, from their microphone, any kind of microphone, just like the ones that many of them are already wearing, just like this one, they, our AI listens. And step three, our AI captures insights and sends them to the cloud. Insights like who the customer is, what they care about, and most importantly, how was their experience? Now, this might seem very simple, but Capturing accurate analytics from these noisy conversations where multiple people are speaking into the same microphone is very, very hard. And our proprietary signal processing algorithms solve this problem, which is what makes this even possible. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Is this even legal? Yes, not only is the data completely anonymized and compliant with the most stringent privacy regulations in the world, but shoppers and customers are actually okay with this. Don't take it from me, take it from any one of the companies who have already signed up and have been using it in their stores. Since launching in December, we were able to grow very quickly into six enterprise pilot partnerships where we're discussing annual contracts of six figures and processing tens of thousands of conversations every month. Now, to give an idea of the value of this data and why we're growing so quickly, take something like inventory planning, the number one problem that offline grocery stores and retailers have today. Just like the example that I illustrated at the beginning with Charles, millions of shoppers are walking into stores and not finding what they're looking for. With Rilla, retailers can, for the first time, capture this signal about what products their shoppers are looking for, not only what they're purchasing, but what they're looking for, so they can minimize out of stocks, maximize chances of conversion in store, and capitalize on a $300 billion opportunity. And that's just one example. But basically, everything Google Analytics did for e-commerce, we are doing for the remaining 90% of commerce that still today, yes, today happens offline. Now, that seems like a grand vision, and that's why we have an amazing team to go after it. I have experience selling software solutions to brands like Heineken and Molson, and my co-founder, Michael, worked for the Department of Defense developing signal processing algorithms to detect enemy objects from sonar. So we have an amazing team that's able to execute very quickly, we also support from amazing people from all over the world to help us usher in the voice recognition revolution of offline commerce. Thank you guys for listening.
Sebastian, that was fascinating. I, I got to ask this question. Where did the idea come from? Was there an aha moment when you said, boy, voice is the insight that retailers are missing? Yes, it, it was actually came from my previous company where I was selling uh, software to brands like Heineken and Molson. And we were just selling this mobile app for if anybody's gone to an event where they see a brand ambassador, you've seen the, the, the brand ambassadors wearing uniforms, interacting with consumers, doing samplings. They do it at retail stores. They do it in events. They do it at college campuses. I'm sure everybody's seen the Red Bull girls, how they put their uniforms on and they go to college campuses. And our software was just a mobile app that, you know, field brand ambassadors collect data with. And one time I was doing user research and we were talking to these Heineken executives and these Molson executives. And we noticed that they were paying millions of dollars for market research for a lot of the data that consumers were naturally giving in these face-to-face -face conversations at events and at supermarkets and at grocery stores where they were doing these samples. So I thought, what if we capture this data naturally from voice? And I called my high school friend, Michael, who, who we went to high school with, and I knew he was an expert in signal processing. And I just asked him, Michael, is it possible to capture accurate analytics from these noisy conversations where there's like Pitbull in the background singing loud music because it's a music festival. And Michael said, yes. And so initially we didn't think of retail, but then Michael's mom told us like, oh, that's like, that's like the grannies who sell you perfume at the Macy's store. And we were like, huh, interesting. And that's when we started looking into retail uh, because we thought that it was a bigger market. Awesome. So I think um, you touched upon this in your presentation, but wanted to get your thoughts on how you see your team, your startup, your product, um, sort of being open and flexible in our current pandemic and our global um, given COVID-19. How are you seeing, you know, what's next for you and the team? So um, we are trying, so right now the, the situation's changing daily. So we're keeping tabs on everything that's happening with brick and mortar retail, with physical retail. Uh, because some stores are reopening now. Everybody has had to have a reopening plan. Some stores are shutting down. They're, they're filing for bankruptcy. So we're keeping tabs on that. But we're preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, basically. The best for us means the physical retail comes back with a heartbeat and then shoppers go and they start shopping again. Uh, but the worst means that uh, after the pandemic, shoppers are still not comfortable going to stores and they're still not comfortable shopping because they still feel scared and people are wearing masks and social distancing rules even until next year. So for that, for us, it means that we probably need to look for other markets that are more suitable for the pandemic now. One of the markets that we love because we want to be able to help in any way we can is, is the nursing market. Uh, being able to um, help nurses with the handoff process to collect patient information seamlessly where they don't have to write down anything so that they can focus on helping patients and not writing down information. That's something that's uh, incredibly valuable to us. And it's something that we've already uh, started uh, uh, piloting with a few nurses. So, so that's something that we're excited about. But right now we're looking into every possibility where our technology can help uh, and hoping that retail is going to come back with a swing. So, awesome. so tell us, tell us a little bit about about what it was like working with Verizon. I mean, you know, you were there for, you know, a, a chunk of time. You came out the, 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 at the end with a relationship and, and where does 5G fit into the product? Just kind of give us a sense of where the Verizon piece fits in. So uh, the Verizon, uh, working with Verizon for us was incredible because as I told you at the beginning, we weren't thinking that we were going to launch this solution in retail. So right around the time that, that, we, that we started doing the Verizon 5G retail lab program, that's when, we, well, that's when we started introducing ourselves into retail. And it was great for us because we came out of that with three pilots in retail where we were already launched before we weren't launched. So we launched with Verizon. We launched uh, in, with many pilot partnerships that, we, that Verizon helped us get. The connections that we made with the other companies helped us tremendously in terms of how to think about this market. What's a good go-to-market strategy here? So that was great. And then to learn about 5G and the impact that it could have on our business. So you saw in my presentation that I mentioned that we can capture insights, but right now we're limited by the current technology because we cannot do these insights in real time. So we have to wait and the manager sees the insights basically the next day from when they're captured because it just takes too much processing time. With 5G, imagine a case where you walk into a shopping store, you walk into a grocery store even, you say something and at the speed of conversation, AI is able to send that signal to the cloud, do an algorithmic analysis to give you a recommendation for a product, for a particular size, for a particular uh, flavor of something that you're looking for. And at the speed of conversation, it's able to give the store associate 
a recommendation about what is it that you need the most. That's something that's allowed by 5G because it's happening within multiple nodes at the same time, thousands of times per minute. And the latency that 5G allows us basically makes that possible. Uh, so for us, it means that it, it takes a lot because it goes from a product that gives insights for long-term planning to insights that are able to make real-time recommendations to make your business more efficient the same day. That's awesome. That's a great use case. And we love hearing about ways in which 5G and edge computing can make things faster, more real time, and essentially really push the bounds on like machine learning models. Um, so, so awesome. I guess to just build off of Steve's question, what are some moments that like surprised and delighted you throughout the course of the program? So we, you know, through our partnership with the 5G Labs team, we brought in a range of mentors that worked with startups on a week by week basis. What are, what were some unexpected sort of delightful pivots that, that you, your, you and your team found? Yeah, so for us, we actually got partnered with a, um, with a brewing company. Uh, and that's something that we weren't initially thinking about when we were thinking of launching into retail. We were thinking of department stores, of fashion retailers, of you know, luxury retailers. But then we got partnered up with a brewing company and very delightful it was that they gave us free beer and they gave us free food. So that was great, <laughs> very delightful. And, uh, but the other thing is that we can use this any that we basically expanded the vision of the company because we realized in the brewing company where it's not like a traditional sales associate customer interaction it's more like a bartender giving recommendations of drinks to people we saw that anytime there's a face-to-face -face conversation in an offline commerce environment there's value in capturing and being able to to utilize the the power of, of human conversation and in this brewing company we designed a really cool uh Project that we launched with them, which was a beer can that people could say their uh, beer recommendations to the brewing company. It's like a, an artisanal brewing company that likes to make new beers every month. And people would go in and just in the can, they would, they would talk to the can and the can would capture uh, their, 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 their recommendations of beer. And it was a really cool uh, prototype that we launched that we wouldn't have thought of initially, but it, it basically brought our thinking as to, oh my God, it's not only the traditional retailer that we're thinking of, it's also restaurants, it's bars, it's any time there's a customer interacting with someone from any brand. I've been known to speak to a beer can from time to time, but I didn't know <laughs> there was a microphone in there. Sebastian, th thank you so much. Really appreciate it and best of luck to you. So Erica, if Rilla Voice is listening to customers in the retail environment, in some ways our next company goes a step further. They're not listening, they're looking. Next up, we're very excited to introduce Eduardo Rivera from FaceNote. FaceNote is a facial recognition platform that offers frictionless payments and pushes the bounds on innovative customer experiences. Eduardo, please take it away. I'm Eduardo Rivera, as Erica mentioned. I'm the CEO of FaceNote. I'm going to speak about how we use facial recognition to enhance customer experience. So, as you know, retail is changing, especially now. We are seeing a huge shift between uh, or from traditional stores into uh, experiential stores. And uh, customers are demanding more and more to have new experiences uh, at the stores. And this is exactly what we do. We enable or transform any store uh, into a smart store. So they are being able to provide uh, completely frictionless new customer experience by using facial recognition technology. Um, so let me show you how this works. So here, a customer enters a store, and boom, she's recognized. Hi, Sheila, immediately. And we notify an associate uh, of her presence and about you know, her preferences and previous purchases. So here is similar at Disney in, uh, for Melissa shoes. We recognize the customer, hey Mariano, and we offer him in this case a scratch and win. And he wins $15 off just for him right now. And the associate can see at her iPad, you know, his information and previous purchases. This is an implementation we did for Coty for a philosophy store. Here is the same, we recognize the customers. Hi Chloe, welcome back. And uh, she's offered 20% off, uh, the same with another customer, the Sire. 
and we notify the associate and show him you know uh, her last purchases as well so how all this works so basically we are a SaaS technology we connect uh, with the three parts of the of this equation so first with the merchant devices so any store can just purchase an ipad and connect to our cloud and they're going to be able to recognize customers and then also we can integrate into the uh, mobile uh, sites of the store to, for the customers to be able to take a selfie and register for recognition and third we can integrate very easily with the crm and, and, and uh, payment gateways from the store so how did 5G uh, improve our technology for this pilot that we did with Verizon? So basically by increasing speed, lower latencies, uh, so we can increase the recognition speed. Also by increasing bandwidth, we can take and use multiple cameras for uh, simultaneous recognition. Also increasing security because we can use different angles uh, to recognize the customer and, uh, and increasing reach with the capacity to support much more uh, devices at the same place and, and time. So this is the pilot that we did with New York City Media Lab and Verizon. We did at the Coffee Project uh, store in New York. And basically they were using paper cards for their loyalty program. They just get stamps on their, on their cards to get discounts and a free coffee. And this brought a lot of problems and it's bringing a lot of problems because, you know, uh, the customers lose the card, the, the associate stamp and they get injured. So it's a lot of problems by using a paper card. And this is how we fix this. We provided a new frictionless loyalty program where Leslie is recognized immediately. She is notified on her phone and that's it. She doesn't need to take a card, touch anything. It's just be recognized by her face. This is what we call frictionless loyalty. You are being rewarded just by being there, just by showing your face. So we've been operating for the past three years in uh, different stores in US, Brazil, Chile, and Argentina. Uh, and so far we have taken more than uh, 12,000 selfies to customers at different stores. Um, so what is the next step? For the past three months, specifically due to the pandemic, we have a huge increase in demand for uh, frictionless payments. And we have been operating a new platform that not only enables frictionless loyalty, but also allow you to pay with your face. Let me show you how it works. Here, the customer enters a coffee store. This is in Buenos Aires. She asks for a coffee and she's asked how she wants to pay. So she says, with my face. Now the barista enters the amount and she just validates her face. No need to carry a phone, no cash, no credit card. Thanks, Sheila, you paid and that's it. She can get the coffee and walk out. And the best part of this is that the next day when she comes back, uh, she's recognized and but due to CRM integration, the barista knows her name and her favorite coffee. So you might think that this is something a little from the future, it's, uh, it's still too far away. And just think that again, and let's see what the new generations and our kids are doing every day, day after day. And what are they doing exactly is selfies. So this is FaceNote, and this is our face recognition technology for enhanced customer service. Thank you very much. So, so tell us about how retail is changing in the new COVID land that we live in. You, you were saying that there's actually more demand for contactless interaction. What does that mean? Uh, actually, the first one, of course, is the obvious one. We have a, a, we have a, a decrease and, and a pause in, a, in some of the retail operations. But at the same time, we have a huge increase in brands uh, willing to know more about frictionless experiences and you know, interacting with their customers uh, without touching anything. So for example, if you can enter a store and pay with your face, uh, can you enter a place and just be recognized, you know, without needing to take out a card, touching anything. And this is something that we have been seeing for the past month, a huge increase in the, in the demand for a, a completely frictionless experience, not only for loyalty, but for payments as well. Awesome. Um, so our program um, collaboration with the Verizon 5G Labs brought you know, the startups that participated in this program um, and work closely with program, 
program advisors on a week to week basis. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience working with the 5G Labs advisors from Verizon? What were some of the benefits? What were some of the surprising, delightful moments over the course of our 12 week program? Well, for us, the program was, uh, was fantastic uh, for several reasons. Um, the first, of, of course, is that we are not from the US, we are from Argentina, and we, we travel mostly every month there. So having uh, the possibility to interact with a huge company like Verizon, and at the same time, having a salue or a, a saliazón between this huge company and, and a small startup, having someone like New York City Lab, uh, Media Lab that is ex experience in, the, in, in how startups behave and, and work. For us, it's been of, uh, of great help. Usually when we interact with big companies uh, and corporate companies, uh, you have the problem of you know, huge delays and you know, the times are really different. So having New York Media Lab in the, in the middle was a very positive point for us. And at the same time, uh, you know, the, the need to travel a lot for us uh, make it very important to have a, a good organization. And I thought that, I think that the agenda that we had for this, uh, this pilot was very well executed. So for us, it was a, a beautiful experience. And not only in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the terms of how the pilot worked, uh, but also in, the, in, in human terms. You know, we met a lot of interesting people. Um, from Verizon, we have a lot of talks with experts that made us understand their real needs. So overall, it was a very good experience for us. Eduardo, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you thank very you. much. So Erica, we've seen a company that looks at people's faces. We've seen a company that's listened to people's voices. Now we're going to get even a little bit further down the road of sci-fi, and we're going to look at Echo AR. And our friend Elon Greenspoon is going to present the company, and then we're going to get a chance to talk to him a little bit about kind of how AR in particular is impacting retail in this new changed environment. Alon, take it away. Steven, uh, Erica, thank you so much. Great to be here. Um, so happy to reconnect in these um, strange times. Um, I'd love to take the opportunity to tell you about Echo AR. So do you want to see something mind blowing? As an engineer at Columbia University, I built an augmented reality application for a physician to see the patient's heart floating above them during surgery. For every surgical case, I took 2D scans, converted them to 3D models, had to rebuild the application, and put in on smart glasses for a physician to wear. That process was so frustrating. And as a developer, I only wanted to do two things, manage the assets and deliver them to an AR device. And when talking to other developers building augmented reality applications for gaming, retail, shopping, data visualization, games, they all said the same thing. There is no easy way to manage and deliver 3D data. But wait, companies have solved this problem for 2D data. Heroku created the best cloud platform for web, later acquired by Salesforce. Parse and Firebase created the best cloud platforms for mobile, later acquired by Google and Facebook. So who will solve the same problem for immersive 3D content in augmented and virtual reality? Hi, so I'm Alon, CEO of Echo AR, and we've built the best cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality apps, providing developers and companies with a way to build augmented reality applications, uh, and we provide them with tools and network infrastructure so they can quickly build and deploy 3D apps across platforms and in real time. Think about it. You don't need to be a web developer to drag and drop an image or video and suddenly it appears on web and mobile. Um, and if we're both watching an episode on Netflix, they might, I'm in New York and you're in California, we automatically get the best streaming experience. We translated these concepts into augmented and virtual reality, providing you with a way to manage and deliver 3D data and get the best 3D streaming experience. Here's how it works. Developers can choose to build their app across any AR or VR platform. If it's Android, iOS, Magic Leap, HoloLens, you, you name it. Content creators can use the console to drag and drop 3D content and matching it with real world targets like locations or images, we build, store, and deliver that immersive content to headsets, mobile devices, everywhere on the planet. And now we've partnered with Verizon 5G to introduce Resonate, a new appless AR 5G tool specifically for the retail space. 
During the program, uh, we met with local businesses and learned that a universal challenge for retail is providing a product discovery experience. Um, this challenge specifically is even greater right now in a post-COVID world where shoppers can't interact with products in store. But for retailers, right now is the time to use technology to turn the chaos into a market opportunity. With 5G enhanced applications like augmented reality, products will be able to resonate with shoppers anywhere from the comfort of their home and create a personalized and informative consumer experience outside of the store. We've built Resonate, an appless in-store augmented reality experience for product discovery, which basically allows retailers um, to remotely recommend products and for consumers to remotely discover products um, easily with their mobile phone. Here's how it works. Consumers uh, can just snap a photo as easy as taking a selfie. Um, all you need to do is scan this QR code. Uh, it's on the screen as well. You can scan it right now and it will spawn that experience in your phone instantly to basically see products and, rec and recommendations that are available um, in store and you can buy them right now. And if you think about it, major retailers already popularized augmented reality for the consumer market with really expensive applications. But with Resonate, all retailers from mom and pop shops to giant um, international conglomerates can capitalize on AR with no technical work, just drag and drop as we saw. Resonate is the ideal product discovery channel for cross-selling products and basically provides with a manageable user interface that provides retailers with analytics and locations um, and, and a lot of information about the consumers and the products. Resonate is built with two core technologies in mind, Echo AR and Verizon's revolutionary, revolutionary 5G network that enables immersive technologies on mobile devices. Uh, and now the opportune time is, is literally now to deploy new tools to change the way people shop. Um, as an appless AR platform, Resonate can set up within an hour with no technical uh, skills. And regardless of distance, Resonate can be active in every store within days. Uh, the speed, stability, and security of 5G means that potentially Resonate um, can scale to every store um, in the country. Um, and that could include a smart recommendation system and expanded product-based interactivity, um, making Resonate just one of many AR retail solutions from Echo AR. Um, since introducing Echo AR into the world, uh, we already have over 800 developers and creators signed up, serving hundreds of users and building applications for healthcare, indoor navigation, home design, gaming, construction, and now retail. Uh, with the support of Techstars and grants from Y Combinator and NYC Media Lab, uh, we have the right team to make AR of your scale. With the support of Verizon, uh, we plan to leverage the full power of 5G, process new types of 3D data faster and more efficiently on the edge, so users will get the fastest download and freshest content. So if you want to join the effort of building the best backend for the most front of industry of all time on top of 5G, uh, definitely reach out for a demo. Uh, I promise to share a demo powered by Echo AR that will blow your mind. Uh, so thank you so much, you guys. So you know, like you mentioned, there's a lot of potential for Echo AR and the platform you've created using immersive tech to really um, help retailers bridge and sort of navigate this COVID world. Um, how do you see immersive tech sort of interacting, you know, enhancing um, the digital experience, replacing the physical uh, brick and mortar? How do you see the relationship between your product and also um, the current sort of challenges within retail today? Yeah, I think that's a perfect question. I think we're in a really different world right now and people still want to get the, you know, that in-store experience, but they can't. Like we're all stuck in our houses uh, and we can't get that physical connection. Um, and AR, VR, 3D technology, like the immersive technology, basically allows you the next best thing, which is interacting with 3D models, have them look lifelike in your house, um, but still not having you know, the constraint of like going outside or, or going to the store. Um, and I think this is, again, as I mentioned, like a really good moment for these technologies to shine. Um, specifically with 5G, that means, again, that, uh, that it, the, the potential is boundless. Everyone in every device can have it. 
And the nature of the content as well, sometimes AR and VR content is much larger than just like an image or a video. And that's where the need for 5G really kicks in. Let's talk a little bit about, about where startups fit in this world. So, you know, Verizon, big company, lots of technology, but very high expectations. How did the Media Lab kind of bridge together what you were trying to build with the relationship with Verizon and was it successful for you? Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, I think for us, the partnership with NYC Media Lab was um, unbelievable. Like connecting a small startup in New York with a large global conglomerate like Verizon uh, was a dream come true. Uh, I think the work of NYC Media Lab specifically of you know, connecting startups with, with, with companies who are already deployed and can help them leverage existing technology to scale up is unbelievable. Uh, for us specifically, um, that partnership with Verizon um, was really trial by fire, how we can take the tech that we've built and make it um, work at scale, um, but also prove to investors um, that we got what it takes to interact with um, large enterprises uh, and take our company to the next level. Alon, thank you very much, much appreciated. Love it, yeah. So that was fantastic. We looked at three amazing companies, but it's important to say the whole program had five companies, five startups. Mm -hmm. Was there a sense you worked with all of them? Was one that stood out or were they all amazing to you? You know, I think they were all wonderful and they were all doing really interesting cutting edge work. So yeah, um, would love to give a shout out to uh, Rilla Voice, Face Note, Echo AR, as well as Oiper and We Are. So they're all doing really interesting work. Um, Oiper, for example, is making all video shoppable in real time using 5G, um, and we are is creating really interesting immersive mobile AR experiences for consumers and businesses. So yes, it was a great program and everyone did excellent. So I have a confession to make. I mean, I read and I, I go to events and I thought I knew what 5G was, and it wasn't until I went to the alley and went to our presentation and saw the 5G demos in real life that I was like, whoa, now I get it. Like this, it's, it is a game changer. It will change the way your phone behaves. It'll change in particular the way mission critical things like medicine use interactivity. I, I, I came away, I want a 5G phone. I didn't before this and I do now. Yeah. And, and you know, the holidays are coming up. So, you know, 5G phone right here. Well-timed, exactly. And yeah, we're really excited to see um, and identify new use cases that um, demonstrate what 5G and edge computing can do across all different sectors and industries. So definitely in retail, but we also know that uh, the 5G Labs team is doing great work in emergency response and other areas as well. Well, thank you all for being part of our virtual open house. This has been our second section, session and we will have another one coming up next week. So please join us again then. Until then, see you soon, Erica. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank <music> you.